Today is Valentine's Day. It's a day that we usually focus on love and positive feelings towards those that are most important to us. Today was a great day. I gave my four-year-old stepdaughter her first bouquet of flowers for Valentine's Day. She was really excited. I also gave a card and some chocolate hearts to my son so he'd have that before he headed off to school. And I gave a big bouquet of flowers to my 19-year-old daughter and she was excited to find them by her computer. My daughter works at the UPS store. I also have a box at the UPS store. She actually took the time to mail me a card. It was pretty cool, so when I checked my box, there was a card from her addressed to me. It was fun getting the mail today. But later on, as I drove down the road mindlessly thinking, I traveled in my own mind back to fourth grade. I still remember, even though that was a long time ago. And I remember the most popular kid in the class getting a lot of Valentine's Day candyograms. I still remember his name. And I remember sitting there wishing that I had gotten a candyogram, but none of the girls gave them to me. They, they sent them to, to him instead, and just a couple of other popular boys. They, they had handfuls of them, but I sat there with some of the other kids just sort of looking around, and nobody had sent me one. Over the years, I've had a lot of wonderful Valentine's Days, but a few of them were pretty rough made some dinner reservations for tonight, and as I was making the dinner reservations for this evening, I thought back to a, a time when I was nearing a breakup in a relationship, and I still remember the tension of that Valentine's dinner, even though that was a long, long time ago. You, right now, as you watch this video, you might be having a wonderful day, or perhaps even the very mention of Valentine's Day brings your attention to feelings of loneliness or loss or sadness or even anger. When I think these thoughts, I'm grateful that time heals all wounds. I'm grateful that things are always changing and that nothing lasts forever. But I'm also grateful for my ability to use mindfulness to accentuate the positive experiences in life, like the hug from a four-year-old kid. And the fact that in my relationships today, I don't have the stress that I may have had at one time in the past. I'm also grateful that by practicing mindfulness, I can set aside the regrets of the past and live fully in the present, neither forgetting those things nor ignoring those things, but accepting them without judgment and simply seeing them as they are, part of the experience that has made me who I am. I'd love it if you'd spend a few minutes with me practicing the principles of mindfulness. If you've never practiced mindfulness meditation before, these are not lengthy sessions, but a time where we can get together via the internet to simply practice paying attention fully to this moment. This allows us to enjoy the present moment despite past hardships and despite even fears or projections into the future. And so join me by finding a comfortable place where you can relax. I find that by sitting in a chair, I can meditate most effectively. And I'm going to begin our time with the sound of a singing bowl. And when you hear the sound of the singing bell, simply close your eyes and join with me over the next couple of minutes in focusing on the breath through this practice of mindfulness during these videos, you'll find that intuitively and automatically, when dwelling on the past or fearing the future, you'll be able to bring yourself to a conscious awareness of the present and enjoy this exact moment. And with the eyes closed, you can pay attention to anywhere in the body where you are carrying the tension of the day. You can let go of that tension, let the shoulders drop. You can even let the chin fall a bit towards the chest if you would like. And breathe in and breathe out with each breath, allowing yourself to pay attention to this moment. Of course, the easiest way to do that 
is by really focusing on the breath. Breath is, of course, something we've been doing since the very first day of life and will continue to do through the end of our life. But rarely do we take the time to pay attention to it, to the point where air enters our nostrils. And the feeling of air as it extends through the back of the throat and travels into the lungs. Follow your breath. Pay attention to it. Note that point in the lungs where the inhale turns around and becomes an exhale being breathed out and the way the warm air feels as you breathe out. You don't have to speed up or slow down your breath. You can just breathe in and out, paying attention to your breath. Notice, of course, as you pay attention to your breath, that by doing so, you're paying attention to this moment, breathing in, breathing out, even, even labeling that breath in, out, because by giving our breath a label, it causes us to make this moment very real. And recognize it in this moment because you're breathing. Everything is exactly as it should be at this precise moment. Breathing in, breathing out. Enjoying the experience of practicing mindfulness. Letting any thoughts that come simply come and go without judgment, without concern. Bringing your attention back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out. Feeling fully alive despite past difficulties or fears of the future. Because by breathing in and breathing out in this exact moment at this exact time, I'm doing exactly what I need to be doing, exactly where I need to be doing it, to be okay, right here and right now. I'm Richard Nongard with mindfulnessmeditation.org and I want to take a moment to wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day.